I'm really excited about today's video. It's a highly requested video on Excel shortcuts that you should know, your colleagues should know, anyone who works with Excel should know. Let's get started. Click anywhere inside your data set, use Control Shift L to add a filter to this. And then you can go about using the usual filter options, filter for names, press enter, that's my list. To deactivate the filter, click inside the data set, Control Shift L takes it away. It's a toggle, Control Shift L puts it back, Control Shift L takes it away. Click anywhere inside the data set and press Control T. The table has headers, click on OK. Design tab is activated. You have a lot more table options. You can decide on the style you want. You can add a total row to this, summarize with the pivot table or remove duplicates. Now there are many more advantages to tables. If for some reason you want to convert this back to a range, just click on convert to range. To jump from one side of your data set to the bottom, use control and the down arrow. To jump to the right, control right, jump to the left, control left, jump back up, control up. This is much faster than using the scroll bar. Now, if you want to jump to the bottom, but highlight everything in between, use control shift down. Control shift to the right highlights everything on the right side. I can click on the home tab to take me to the top of the data set. So if I had some text here and I use control shift to the right, it highlights everything there. It doesn't jump to D because D is in fact empty. This information is sitting in E. If I wanted to format all of these, I'm going to use control shift down to highlight them. Control one, which takes me to the format cells options. I can decide on my formatting and press enter. If I'm not using an Excel table and I want to add a sum to this, just click on the cell below or above your data set, use Alt equal sign. That automatically inputs the sum function for you and it tries to figure out the range that you probably want to sum. So in this case, it has correctly figured it out. If I had a number here and I use auto sum here, it thinks that I want to add these two values and press enter. So it's quite smart in trying to figure out what you want to sum. If you want to copy and paste your formula, but you want to have your numbers as hard coded, so you want to paste it as values without the formula behind this, you need this shortcut. So first control C to copy and then Alt ESV to bring up the paste special dialog box. All you have to do now is press enter and you've pasted it as values. Now I know this is a difficult one to remember. The way I remember it is eat some vitamins, ESV. You just have to figure out something that works for you. To add a new line inside a cell, use Alt Enter. So you have to be in edit mode because if you press enter here, it just moves down one cell. To move down a line inside a cell, press Alt Enter, and now you can input your text and you can adjust the formatting as you like. To select the entire data in the current region, click anywhere inside your data set and press Control A. Once your data set is highlighted, to insert a default chart, click Alt F1. The next one is a great one. Let's say you want to add email addresses to this. So you want to repeat this pattern for the next ones. It should be james.willard and so on. I'm going to hold down the shift key and the down arrow key to highlight this area. And then I'm going to press control E. That's flash fill magic. It tries to figure out the correct pattern based on the pattern that I gave it first. In this case, I just gave it one option and I figured it out correctly. Sometimes for flash fill to work properly, you might need to give it more sample data. To highlight an entire row, use shift and space. To highlight an entire column, use control and space. To insert a new row or column, use control plus. This brings up the insert dialog box. You can select insert an entire row, entire column, but because we already learned a shortcut before this, we're going to use that first. So let's say I want to insert an entire column. I'm going to highlight the whole column. What was the shortcut key? 
control space, control plus, that automatically is going to add a column. It's not going to ask you if you want a row or a column. Now let's repeat for the row, shift and space, insert a new row, control plus. To remove an entire row, control minus. To remove an entire column, control minus. But if you want to avoid the dialog box, we're going to highlight the entire column first, and then we're going to do control minus. If you want to drag an entire row and drop it somewhere else, so let's say I want to move Richard Elliott in between Robert and Paul, what I'm going to do is highlight the entire row. Now, if I drag this and let it go, it's going to try to replace this data, but I don't want it to replace it. I want to actually put it in between those two. So here you drag it, but while you're dragging it, you're going to hold down the shift key and that's going to insert it between those two. To hide a column, use control zero. To hide an entire row, use control nine. When I first receive a new workbook from someone else, I want to check if anything has been hidden in there or not. The shortcut key I use is Alt semicolon. That highlights the visible cells only. And this way, I get a visual indication that some rows and columns have been hidden. If nothing comes up, nothing is highlighted, it means that no rows or columns have been hidden. Now let's say I've updated this information here. I want to add a timestamp to this. I'm going to use the shortcut key control semicolon. And if I want to add the time to it, I'm going to add a space and use control colon and press enter. One bonus tip. When I receive a new file and I want to highlight all the constants in that file, I press F5, Alt S, OX, enter. This highlights all the numbers that don't have formulas behind them. So here I can see this has a formula behind it. What I recommend you do is to pick three shortcuts that you didn't know before and you think you're going to need in the future and practice them a few times. If there is any other Excel shortcut that you consistently use, please share it with us in the comments below. Now, if you want to learn more tips to help you design reports faster in Excel, it's your lucky day because I cover nine more tips in my Excel advanced course on Skillshare. Now, because this class is on Skillshare, which is an online learning platform, once you register, you get access to over 25,000 classes in business, programming, office applications, and a lot more. So you don't just learn from me, but from thousands of other instructors. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes that are right for you and for your career goals. So let's say if this weekend you wanted to get started learning about data science and Python, there's nothing holding you back. Skillshare is also very affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And here's the best part. The first 500 of my subscribers who use the link in the description below are going to get a two month free trial that's going to give you unlimited access. Click that link, sign up and start learning. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel. I'm not sure what this shortcut for a thumbs up is, but if you know it, please use it. Otherwise, just click that thumbs up. The list of all the shortcuts is provided below this video. Print it out, keep it handy and share it with your colleagues. See you in the next video.